on today's show good god lemon lebron james could be making his way to the dallas mavericks stop stop don't do it he talked about it on the shop brian windhorse maybe backed it up we'll talk about that and then also i did a deep dive on the highest usage rate in playoff history can the mavericks win multiple rounds in the playoffs or even make the finals with Luca having the uses percentage he does. We'll talk about all that more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. If you don't believe you shouldn't be here. Welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com. Use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and use the app. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Joining me, as always, my co host, writer, and contributor at Mavs.com. The Dirk dude, the one we're thinking, what you got for me, Isaac Harris? Drinking, hold, hold on. The, the podcast listeners need to know. <laughs> taking taking a big drink of milk out of a wine glass, Isaac Harris. Let's go. <laughs> the bougie boy, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? <laughs> All right, little sta- little standings update at the top. Yeah. Uh, we've been given the standing update at the at the end, but at the bottom, but it, it's it's too necessary now. It's literally every day. We watched we just watched Malik Monk uh, versus the Warriors. Taylor Horton and, Tucker uh, had like 40 points. Shout out. Remember worth all he, t- worth all 10 million a year. Remember when the Lakers really thought he had big time trade value? <laughs> the We um, won't send him for Kyle Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real thing. <laughs> that was real. So, uh, Warriors beat the Lakers. Some ass fans got their hopes up really high watching that game. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was still not rooting for the Lakers. Don't care. I can't. I can't do it. I just. I get it. I get it. It's okay. It I get it. Uh, the the way it's fallen now, it looks almost. A, I think there's a small, small, like wild chance they could play the Warriors in the first round, but it's probably not going to happen. It's either Denver or Utah. Yep. And we just got to see how it shakes out. Whether it's three or four, it looks like it's pointing towards that four or five matchup against Utah. Wait, Nazareth. I don't think they can play Golden State anymore. It could. It, it was possible if they had lo- if the Warriors had lost that game, but. The Warriors are three games up on the Jazz. I'm pretty sure Mark Falwell tweeted out that there's a slight possibility, but the Warriors are three games up on the Jazz, and there's only two games left. I don't think it's possible. Uh, I think it was something about a three-way tie, and it would change some of the. Anyway, just going off Mark. Jazz can only get 50 wins. The Warriors already have 51 wins. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was possible if the Warriors had lost that game. But anyway, we'll continue. I have something to share with you. I got to see uh, this book, The Great Nowitzki. Yeah. Thomas Pletzinger, Pletzinger was the author, and uh, he, they had like a, a reading at this place called The Wild Detectives in Bishop Arts. And guess what? Dirk signed my book. The Wild Detectives. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. Look at that. That was awesome. Made my day. Made my night. Shout Did out you get to- a picture I, with him? I saw a couple. No, there was no pictures. I I, I saw a couple of of, of uh, Raccoon Squad members there. One person yelled at Raccoon Squad at me. Love that. Saw another guy that was like, "Dude, I don't listen to your show anymore." Like, Thanks, bud. <laughs> did he, Did he really? Yeah, that's what he said. That's okay. Because of what y'all said about Jason Kidd, <laughs> he still recognized me. All right. <laughs> Let's get into the topic. So on the shop, LeBron James's hangout with his buddy's show. Shocking that it was the shop that he had to bring You called to it. Show. You totally 100% called this. With, he, with on, Not on the pod, guys, but I literally told Nick off the pod, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. LeBron's going to do something to bring the spotlight to him. <laughs> and we were joking about what the platform would be, and I'm like, it's it's 100% going to be on the shop. Yeah, it's going to be on the shop. So on the shop, he was asked, you know, who's a player you'd want to play with? The first one he said was Steph Curry. And then he started beating around the bush and started talking and going back and forth. And then he also said, Luka Doncic. God bless. That MFR is cold. That's what he said about Luka. He said that he would like to play with Luka. He only mentioned two active players, and one of them was Luka Doncic. We've heard also, and then Brian Windhorst went on ESPN and said, hey, you know, Steph Curry, you know, is obviously the one that he wants to play with, but a more realistic option would be Luka Doncic. He, you know, LeBron tried to get him on a Nike when Luka was a shoe deal free agent. 
but then he went to Jordan Brand. LeBron has also drafted uh, Luka Doncic three times, I think, in when he was, uh, you know, in the All Star game and all that kind of stuff. And so he said that that one is a little bit more realistic. Isaac, we've also seen if uh, Bronny gets drafted by a team, LeBron may go to that team, and so there's possibility of him moving teams. Even what do we think about LeBron playing in Dallas with Luka? No, just Sorry. like in, just on, no. on on what sense? You from everything. your point of view, everything, a- everything. Um, I don't want it. Um, I don't think it happens, but (laughs) here's the thing. So LeBron's 37. He makes, uh, he makes this year, he's making 41.1. Next year is a theoretical expiring contract next year, 44.4. One, I just don't even know. Like, I, I guess at the season after that, if he just wants to play out his contract because a tr- like a team trading LeBron James seemed just like weird as heck. It's never happened. Yeah. So it would have to be probably like the, and, the next off season. And like LeBron's never been traded. Uh, Jordan never got traded. Kobe never got traded. Magic never got traded. Like these guys just don't get traded. Like, you know, like your top 10, top five players in NBA history just don't get traded. Dirk. Kareem Kareem did get no, traded, but Dirk that was draft he, kind of he kind of forced his way out. But um, so for LeBron, here's the thing: I don't want it to happen at all. Like personal bias aside, I just let Luca be Luca. Personally, I don't think you can put your personal bias aside on this one. Okay, um, at all. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing: if there's an owner in sports that would be willing to draft Bronny. <laughs> to get lebron <laughs> it's it's mark cuban <laughs> and we know how much luca loves lebron and i mean the similar playing styles and all of that nike nico as <laughs> uh, yes nike and nico um it's funny for me personally because i'm i'm in a text group with uh, some some of my guys oscar chase and tanner they listen to pause about and we put this betting Shout wager out. on uh, literally the day before this news comes out, <laughs> two of the guys in that group chat texted and said LeBron to the Mavs. And I just said, never. And so we put this like friendly wager down that, Hey, all right. <laughs> the other person has to go. We, we take the other two a Brazilian steakhouse. If night one LeBron is in a Lakers Jersey or LeBron's in a Mavs Jersey. And of course I said, never, it'll never happen. The next day this comes out and it's the talk, you know, LeBron's ch- shop and all this stuff. So anyway, it was a fun group text that day of like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, but no, I don't think it, I don't think it happens. I don't think LeBron leaves LA personally. And if he does leave LA, I just don't see him going to Dallas and all of that. Yeah. So in the on the court sense, I mean, Luca and LeBron, we've seen how LeBron has worked with other guards in the past, right? With, with Kyrie, Kyrie had to be way off the ball to play with LeBron, uh, du- Dwayne Wade, they had to figure it out. It took them a couple years to try and figure out how, and Le- Wade had to be way off the ball a lot. Westbrook, Westbrook's a guy that's a high usage guy. I'm not going to compare Luke and Westbrook, but they both have the ball in their hands a lot. Both high usage guys. Something it has not- tells me Westbrook is going to be coming back later in this pod. It has not worked at all with those two guys. And so I just don't think that LeBron can play with a guy that, that has the ball in his hands as much as a guy like Luca. You know, has the ball in his hands. So I, I, just, I don't think it would work basketball wise either. It wouldn't be as bad probably as this Lakers season this year for sure, because Luca's so much better than AD and obviously Westbrook. But on the court, I don't know if it makes the. I mean, it doesn't take them like it's not their finishing piece, right? It doesn't take them to that next level. Um, I don't well, know. Even I mean, with LeBron being as good as he is now, it's hard to say. But yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> God bless. You're making me push back on this. So I'm not like if they played together, they would be good together. Like I, I'm not like, it wouldn't even be a basketball fit of, Hey, LeBron, would he fit with Luca and all that? Like, I think they would fit. I think it would be perfectly fine fit because they're both basketball geniuses and they're both, you know, bigger bodies, wings, they play multiple positions. So like all that he would be 38. Like if we're just assuming it's that next off season, he would be 38 and all like another year older, another season. So I just don't, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't, I don't, and I just he don't can only play a certain number of games every year. Cause he's got to still play at the level he wants to play. But then to do that, he's got to sit out some game. You know, it's just, it'd be the back and forth of, is he playing? Is he not playing? But you know, the only thing that would convince me is if Luca came out and said, Oh, 
I want to stay if we get LeBron. If we'll, LeBron was willing to come here and LeBron, and we know that it came out, Luca's like, hey, get LeBron, then sure. Oh, and, Luca wants. And let me tell you, we would be as we would be excited as hell <laughs> to have LeBron James. Oh, heck no. What? <laughs> what? I would you <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> And I, I swear, if somebody else sends me a Westbrook, a, a Westbrook Mavs trade one more time, <laughs> don't send. Somebody sent it to me. Yeah, today. someone sent. Send us, someone sent us the one where it's THJ and uh, and Davis Bertans just to dump the contracts. You do get off of those two contracts two years earlier, but cool. Sorry, no, but no, that's, that's I, all you get. Personally, I would not be. You wouldn't be excited no. just to see what it's like. No, no, just to see Luca and LeBron together. No. Not at all. That that can happen Just on the All weekend for all I care. Happen on a. I'm glad that it turned into LeBron. Oh, LeBron going to Dallas because the Lakers situation sucks so bad. Instead of you know all the Luca photoshops. And, it's a much better situation. A, a coach that he wanted to play for and Jason Kidd. That's well documented. Um, So, yeah, I think this is not a rumor. I think this is just like LeBron saying, hey, I would love to play with this player. Right. That's just throwing a just throwing a name out there. I don't think this is a real rumor, real thing, but it was interesting. It's an interesting thought experiment. Interesting to think about coming up. Let's get into a completely different topic. Luca has the ball in his hands a ton. He has one of the highest usage rates in the NBA in the playoffs. That usage rate even goes up. Can the Mavericks win playoff rounds with Luka having a usage rate that long? I went on a big deep dive and I went through all the players in the NBA and went through their usage rate in the playoffs and went through all the finals MVPs. And I'm going to tell you why the Mavs need to change something in order to get to the finals. Talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Odds. All kinds of Masters odds. Go check it out. Go check out the golf stuff. Let's see. The Masters. Uh, the field is minus 135. And then there's Smith, Johnson, Scheffler, and I'm. Yeah. I don't know who I am. Is. I am LM. There's Scheffler, a- Scheffler's pretty legit. He's got a he's got a good pitching wedge. They're plus 113. So you can pick that. Those guys, you can pick the field. That's a pretty interesting one if you want to check out that. Uh, there's all kinds of different things if you want to pick how far people go and things like that in the Masters. There's also basketball odds. You can check out the Dallas Mavericks against the Portland Trailblazers. Isaac, you want to guess what the line is for that game? I'm going to go it is um, 15 and a half. <laughs> Higher. Wow, 18 and a half. No, you nailed it. 18 and a half. I thought you were going to go 16. Yeah, 18 and a half. Complete. The Mavericks are an 18 point, 18 and a half point favorite against the players playing in Portland Trailblazers jerseys. So go check it out on Bet Online. Use the, uh, or go ahead and head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. It's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Isaac Harris, thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen for your next listen. Check out the Lockdown Now podcast. It's nightly recaps of every NBA game. They also have MLB. They also have uh, hockey, all kinds of good stuff. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right. Inspired by Ryan Rossillo, he did a recent episode where he talked about the usage rates of some players. And I think he was talking about Luca a lot. He was talking about uh, Harden a lot. He was talking about these guys that have super high usage rates. And a usage rate is an advanced stat that stands for, you know, percentage of the time that the possession ends with you, right? That the possession ends with you doing something, you creating, you, you doing something for your team. Uh, a really high usage rate is like in the 30s, you know, 30, 35, you know, 38, 40 is like insane. And it's only happened a a few times. So I I went back and I did a deep dive through the entire like recent history of the NBA. And I wanted to see, okay, which players had the highest usage rate that made it the farthest in the playoffs. So let's just, let's just start with this. Luca's usage rate in the regular season this year is 37.3. It's the highest or one of the highest in the NBA. 37.3%. 37.3%. That's that's high. That's a, that's a huge number. Last year, it was 36.0. In the playoffs, it went up to 40% in that in that series. Now, there was, you know, Jalen Brunson was limited. It was just him and Tim Hardaway Jr. And nobody, like no other guards, really. Josh Richardson was, was limited. Like there's just all kinds of stuff where uh, Porzingis was obviously limited in what he could do. And so everything, everything, everything was on Luka. His usage rate went up to 40 it was 36 in the regular season. The year before that in the playoffs, it was 37 and a half percent. 
and it was 36.8 uh, in the regular season that year. So Luca, over the last three years in the regular season and the playoffs has been just about between 36% and then that 40% is kind of an outlier there for him. So really high, really high compared to everybody else. Let's look at some of the usage rates for players that have won the finals, just straight up won the finals. The only players in NBA history that have won the finals with a usage rate of 35 or higher. In the regular season or in the in the playoffs? Have won the finals and that usage rate in the in the, the playoffs of 35 or higher. Okay. So in the playoffs. Including the finals. Including the finals. So it so just the playoff games right so remember lucas last year was 40. the year before that in the playoffs it was 37.5. jordan had a 35 in 1997. jordan in 98. jordan in 92. jordan in 93. jordan in 92 his usage rate was 37.1 which is that's about where where luca is right now Hmm. jordan in in 1993 his usage rate was 38 and he won the finals Hakeem had a use rate of 35.9 in 1995. Those are the only players. It's just Hakeem once and Jordan four times to have a usage rate of 35 or higher and make the finals. What does that tell you about um, what the Mavericks are doing with Luka and what's possible, basically? And by the way, those are like in the 90s. Like, When was the last Jordan year? Yeah, that's that's just my takeaway. What was the last Jordan year? 98. 98. 98. It was it was 36.6. So yeah, it's been you know twenty four years since that's it's a long time. Basketball has changed that, a lot. That's my biggest takeaway. <laughs> D- Dirk <laughs> had Dirk has come, changed basketball, and gone since then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean that, that that's my biggest takeaway of that is the game has changed since the nineties. Whether you whether you like it or don't like it, <laughs> there's some changes I like, some changes I don't. But it hasn't happened in twenty four years that you know, play with that high, you know, of a, of a usage rate, I would assume um, just off the top of my head that there's been players that's went to the finals. Correct. With that usage rate, but they haven't won it. Great transition. The highest usage rate for any player that didn't win, like went to the finals and lost was LeBron James, 2015 against that Warriors team mm. he had a 37.6% usage rate. So even that one is not like even 40, right? Like not what Luca was uh, last year in the playoffs. Iverson in 2001, the step over um, Tyron Lou year, where he played against Kobe and Shaq in the fi- in the finals, Aaron had a usage rate of 36.8 that he lost in five games in the finals, but 36.8 was his usage rate. And then LeBron in 2018 had a usage rate of 35 and lost in the finals to that Warriors with KD team. Those are the only players. Those are the only players that have played in the finals that have been meaningful players that have had a usage rate of 35 or higher. Jordan in the four in four of them that he won, Hakeem in one that he won, LeBron in two that he lost, and Iverson in one that he lost. So there's only been there's only been three players who have made it to the finals in the two thousands in the past twenty two years. Yeah, that have had that high. Two of them are LeBron, (laughs) and all three of them lost. Right, and yeah, and two of them are LeBron. Uh, If you want to look at some other players, so like, um. Let's look at some other players and how far they went with a usage rate of 35 or higher. These are players that have handled the ball as much or, you know, just about as much as Luca is right now. Uh, Jordan lost twice in the Eastern Conference Finals in uh, 89 and 90. His usage rate was 35 and 36 those years. Uh, that's when he ran into the bad boys Pistons and uh, go those in the, in the Jordan dock when he couldn't get over the hump. That's, that's those two years. Um, 2011. Derrick Rose, his MVP year, he lost in the Eastern Conference Finals, had a usage rate of 35. James Harden in that Western Conference Finals that went seven against that Warriors team that he almost beat. Remember, it was that uh, that KD Steph team that he almost beat, and the and then the Rockets missed all those threes. Uh, he had a usage rate of 36.7. So, like even Harden that year, his usage rate was not as high as what Luca's is right now or what Lucas was in the playoffs last year, right? Like all this is just telling me this is like what Lucas doing is not sustainable or has just barely ever been done except for Jordan <laughs> twice. Trey Young, 2021, last year, 35.4 when they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. That was his usage rate, it was 35.4. So there's a couple other examples of guys making it to the, the Conference Finals, but still, 
the usage rate that Luca, the, my takeaway from those from those buckets of numbers is the usage rate that Luca has right now is not sustainable to make it to the finals unless he is Michael Jordan. Good observation. <laughs> That's it. Unless <laughs> unless he is Michael Jordan. Um, coming up, I want to talk about the finals MVPs. Now I know we're going you know far out to the finals MVPs, but I also am going to talk about. Um, there's only been a handful of players that have made it past the first round with the usage rate of, you know, that that's that high uh, or even to the conference finals with the usage rate. That's that high. And the Mavericks are looking at, they're trying to get to that third seed, trying to get to that conference final. So let's talk about some of those players as well that made it to a conference finals or made it to, you know, made it to the second round and lost. And we'll talk about those players coming up before we do. Let me tell you about built bar. It's a protein bar tastes like a candy bar. They're delicious. They're great. Mm. Built bars. Love them. Isaac, what's your favorite what's flavor? The, what's the flavor of that new puff you've been trying to get us to get? <sighs> the brownie batter. I, I looked it up. I'm not going to lie. I have it as a tab open right now. Brownie batter puffs. I'm telling you, they're delicious. The coconut brownie chunk ones, they might be taking a back seat for me. If if, the, my, if my next, if once the brownie batter, once the coconut brownie chunk ones come back, I may just put a double box and do brownie batter and that one. But the brownie batter one's delicious. Go check it out. Uh, 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, seven grams of sugar. Check it out. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your entire order. We had somebody else talk to us today and said that they wanted Built Bars for their birthday and they got a pack and they were like, oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Shout out to Casey. Casey is like, the only thing I specifically requested for my birthday was a variety pack of Built Bar and all wow. caps. Holy moly. I don't think I'll ever eat a protein bar again. That's a real person that said that to us. Unprompted. Shout out to Casey. Use the promo code LOCK15. You get 15% off your entire order at Built.com. All right, Isaac Harris, I'm bogging you down with some numbers today. I'm I'm bringing out some numbers. I wanted to respond to your your one while ago. I know he had a break, but so I didn't want to start my whole thing then. But I appreciate the the clarification. I do want to say this. If there's somebody to do it, it's Luca. Like that that's the counter to this because I know that we probably listen to those numbers and and even myself, it's like, hey, he can't like this is isn't sustainable. This isn't it it doesn't have a, a track record of showing that this is the way to win a basketball. This this is the way. To right. make it to the finals and the conference yes. finals, right? We're we're talking about the highest, highest of levels right now. Yeah. So could he have a, a, a usage rate of 40 and then make it to the second round? Yeah, for sure. But we're also looking at what these next, what, you know, Don't, it's never happened before. You should trade a 40 and made it to the second round. But I'm saying they <laughs> went to, I mean, they were really close last year in the playoffs. Yeah, right. And it could have happened. It could have very well happened. And it's Luca. So I know that we're looking at it and saying like, do we want him to have that high of a usage rate? No, personally, but if there's if there is a player to do it, I wouldn't be shocked. Like if we're trying to fantasy draft players, they're like, hey, you know, it'd be what Giannis, it would be Jokic, it would be, you know, Luca. It, it'd only be a handful of these players. He needs a little help, right? It's sort of the whole the whole point of this of this whole thing is talking about usage rates and all that is that he needs some help to get to the finals and when he needs some help. So let's look at these finals MVPs. Last year, Giannis, thirty two. LeBron, the year before, 30. Kawhi with Toronto, 32. Kevin Durant, his two years in Golden State, 30, 28. LeBron, Cleveland, this is for you, 30. LeBron, I'm going to skip I'm going to skip Iguodala and Kawhi in San Antonio because they weren't carrying the offense. Uh, LeBron, the two years in Miami, 29 and 33. Dirk, the year that he won in 2011, the greatest year of all time, 32. Kobe, the two years he won with Pau Gasol, 33 and 33% usage. Paul Pierce that year with the, the Celtics, 26. Um, I can keep go- I'm going to keep going through these cuz there it just mm. it's all through it's all 30 to 32% is the is what finals MVPs get, right? Luka needs some help to get to this spot or else he'd have to make history. And this is sort of my other point is that it's never happened before unless you go back to Jordan in 93-92. He had a usage rate of 38 and 37 and won the finals MVP. Those are the highest ones. Um, the other high ones we mentioned earlier, Jordan, those two years, 98 and 97, was at 36 and 35. He'd either have to make history or get some help, right? And I believe in Luca. I believe that he can get to this spot. Like he, he can take them to the finals and he can get them to that point at some point. 
but he's going to need some help. Every single finals MVP and every, every team that's made the finals has gotten help. Like it's not just been on that one player as much as it's on Luca right now. Yeah. Because I mean, you look at, just look at the two final scenes last year, the Suns and bucks. They had Devin Booker. They went on and got Chris Paul, the bucks. They, you know, they've had Middleton alongside Giannis. They go out right. and make the, the massive trade for drew holiday. So, you know, when you're saying that, when you're listing off these finals MVPs and they're lower, <laughs> still over 30 usage rate, my first thing I'm thinking of is like, let's go through them one more time and let's look at the their teammates of that. So we yeah. had Giannis last year, year before that. LeBron. Yes. Anthony with, an- with, with Anthony Davis. Yeah. Well, Ka- yeah. I mean, that was like the fake title, but keep on going. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard the year before that with Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Lowry. Yeah. Fred Van Vliet. Uh, Durant, I mean, I those two years, the, Durant, the, the two closest? years of the war. Yeah, and and Kawhi's was only usage rate was only thirty two. So <laughs> I mean, he's so still like most most of these dudes. Like you're looking at LeBron, you're looking at Durant, Giannis. They're playing with legit all stars. Like, yeah, for sure. As much as we love Dinwiddie and Brunson and some of these guys, like none of them are all stars. So I mean, Brunson would have to have a massive season next year to be considered an all-star so really you keep on going back and you're like all right well is it the 2011 team is that the closest one? <laughs> <laughs> the 2011 team dirk had a usage rate of 32 yeah but it, i'm like i'm just trying to think i'm trying to think of a team that you listed to where the star had that low of a you know usage rate in the 32 30 range and they didn't have an all-star alongside of them and if that happens, then it takes a truly historic and all-time championship run that Dirk did. Right, which brings us to our point in this third segment is that Luca either has to get some help or make history. Yeah, he, and have a Dirk 2.0 run. I mean, that's, yep. that's, the, that's the type of if, – if Dallas is going to make a run to go to the finals, it's going to be Dirk-esque with Luca. It's good. And, and it's not, we're not, I'm not trying to take away. I mean, yeah. Could Dinwiddie go off and be a, like a, a second legit person in the playoffs for sure. He could, we that hope would be, so. That would be the, you know, a, a big surprise to us, right? Like we, that would be awesome. Could Brunson turn into like, that would, that would be a welcome surprise, but could Luca pull off a Dirk run? And that's and in that run, you have to have a l- little bit of luck of, how many, times, how many times we look at it and say in that run, different players had different moments. JJ Barea, Peja, you know, Jason Terry, Jason Kidd, these different guys, different spots. Could that happen in a run like this? Yeah. Could we see Bertons come in and hit four or five threes in a game and win a game? Could we see the so it's there? And you, I mean, you look at the run too of I mean, what they play Utah or Denver, then they play Phoenix in the second round, then you're playing say Memphis in, in a conference final, you know, it's not the same as the, the Dirk run because that was just the greatest, you know, if not the greatest final run. True, true, true. Memphis and, and that Thunder team are kind of similar though. The, that 2011 Thunder team. They that's don't have true. the same level of talent, but they've got some high draft picks and they're this young and team Phoenix, that's up and coming. Phoenix went to the finals last year. So, and the Lakers went to the finals that the year before 2011. So there's some similarities. That Lakers team is nowhere near as good as the Suns team, though, for sure. They were on there. They were on the end there. Um, okay, let's qu- let's quickly just go through some of these these other players um, that made it to the second round with the usage rate of 35 or higher. It's not happened very often. So it's all the finals players that I mentioned before. It's all the conference players I mentioned before. So it's the Jordans, LeBrons, Hakeem's, Iverson, Harden, Jordan, um, Trey Young, uh, Derrick Rose. In the second round, they made it to the second round with a, a usage rate of 38. Donovan Mitchell, 2021, last year, the Utah Jazz team that lost to the Clippers. Melo in 2013 had a usage rate of 38, lost in the second round. That was with the wow. Knicks. Remember that year with the Knicks? He made the playoffs. Yeah, 30. The only, the only one. <laughs> I think Tyson was on that team. Yeah. Uh, 2019, James Harden lost in the second round to the Golden State Warriors, had a usage rate of 37.1. Iverson in 2003 had a usage rate of 36.7. Um, so for Luca to have a use straight of 40 and make it to the second round would be history. It's never happened before. Well, I, yeah, it, I don't think he's going to sniff 40. I hope I so. Think, yeah. Because last he's year, he's at 37.3 so, right now in the regular season. And I, and I think, you know, that's where coaching staff, that's where Luca, 
will have to be cognizant of that going on the series because if there's a, ever a time that you fall back into the, all right, now it's my time. Like, I'm just going to take, like, it's just me. I have to do it all. It's the playoffs, but they have a few more creators now. Let's yep. hope Brunson has a better series. They have Spencer Dinwiddie. They have a, a few more guys that can run the offense. They can do some things. So, you know, our second best guy last year was Porzingis and he was regulated to the corner for a lot of the series. Absolutely. So there it is. That's that's right there. Luka Doncic is going to have to do something we've never seen before to get the Mavericks out of the second round. And we 100% believe he can do that. This is not trying to pile on and say, oh, it's hopeless. There's no shot for them to win a, a first round series even or get to the conference finals. It can happen. Luka's just going to have to make history to do it. He's obviously going to have to get a little bit of help. But if they're going to get to a point where, you know, the conversation we had yesterday, how the Mavericks have built their offense, did they, you know, is it going to work having just Luca do everything? And historically, it has not helped. It has not worked like that. So for the Mavericks to take the next step, which is go to the finals, make the conference finals, they're gonna have to do. They're have to make another big. I think it's. Either, I think it's more either or. I think it's he's either gonna have to get a lot of help in the playoffs, yeah, or he's gonna have to make history. I think I think it's the either or game because is there another we, option? I don't know if there's another option. Well, well, I think I, I think how you were saying is like in order for them to make a run, he's gonna have to make history. And yeah. I think the only way for him not to have to make history is if Brunson, Dinwiddie, some of these guys like actually like they step their game up to a whole different level to where Luca hovers around that 32 mark, that 33 yeah. mark, and Brunson he can play off the ball can, a little bit more. He can take yeah, some exactly. possessions off, all that. Yeah, yeah. So. We'll see. We'll see which route they go. If they if they move forward, it's going to be one of those two. There you go. Let us know in the comments what you think about LeBron. I guess. No. <laughs> Thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen every day. Now make your second listen. Lockdown NBA. Wes Goldberg, Adam Mara's got you covered today. The biggest the experts covering the biggest stories in the NBA. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Isaac, guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. So boom. <laughs> <laughs>